But we're going to be, you know, if I was to say, you know what, we shouldn't steal, you shouldn't rob banks, you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't hurt people, you shouldn't rape or murder, you'd be like, yep, that would be wrong, that would be wrong. But there's some sins along the way that we become okay with. How many are going to be a, brave enough to admit it? And sometimes we think, well, we have to do this because this sin is necessary. So I have to do it because, well, if I don't do it, then what is that going to be, be like? As Christians, we seem to break sins into categories. Big sins and small sins. And we like it that way because it makes us feel better. So if we have to tell a little lie, we say, well, at least I didn't kill anyone. Or at least I, I don't, I'm not addicted to drugs. Or at least I don't do this. So I'll just okay with this small category of sin. How many know sin doesn't work that way? Amen. How many know sin is sin? Right. So we're going to be talking about this over the next few weeks, and the first necessary sin that we're going to be talking about is lying. How many have ever told a lie? <laughs> Seriously, Lynn? You've never told a lie? Okay. Alright. So how many have, hold up your hand. How many have, have, how many have lied before? Okay, I'm going you don't want your first lie to be in church, okay? So make sure. <laughs> but we've come up with some sins that are acceptable or they're respectable. Well, I lied because I didn't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Or I lied because, well, what else is I supposed to do? And we're okay with saying, okay, rape or murder or stealing is, 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 is bad. I won't do those things. But I like to do these other things. And we think those sins are necessary. We would all agree that those big sins are wrong. But we're going to be taking a look over the next four weeks on these sins that we call necessary sins. Months ago, we talked. Of, we did a series called Dangerous Prayers. And you remember? And we talked about prayers that we could pray that are very, very dangerous. And one of those prayers is found in Psalm 139, 22 to, 23 to 24. And I would really like us to pray this prayer today. Because sometimes we live in a lie, and we've told ourselves the lie for so long that we're not even sure if it's true anymore. How many have ever had that happen? Yeah, I mean, and we live in a lie, and we don't even know if it's true anymore. So this is the prayer that I would like us to pray. Just in your own heart. Found in Psalm 139. It says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you. And lead me along the path of everlasting. I read a story of a guy, and this guy, when I was, when I was going through a bunch of stuff, this guy was in church, and he was just new to church. And the pastor got up in, one week, and he said, okay, this week what I want everybody to do is I want everyone to read Mark chapter 17. He said, so is everyone going to read Mark 17? And he's like, everyone's like, yeah. And this guy said, I really wanted to read Mark 17. I was like, I'm going to read this. I'm new, and i got to find out what this Bible thing's about. And I want to read it, and I'm going to do it. So the next week, church starts. Everyone comes in, sits down. And he says, okay, who read Mark 17? The pastor at the front says, who read Mark 17? And th only three people raised their hands. And he was one of them, this guy that I read. He read his hand, raised his hand. And he looked around, he said, what is wrong with these people? And he hadn't read it himself. But he said, I can't believe only three people read Mark 17. He said, even though I didn't read it, I can't believe these other losers didn't read it. <laughs> but he was lying the whole time. So the pastor says, there's only three of you have read it. I'm so proud of you three. Why don't you stand up? So he gets those three all to stand up. He said, we just want to honor you for reading Mark 17 and doing such a great job. And so to honor you guys, what we're going to do is we're all going to read Mark 17 together. So everybody pick up your Bibles and turn to Mark 17. So everyone picks up their Bibles, turns to Mark 17, and there's no Mark 17. So the three of them lied. 
right in church. I was I wouldn't do that to you. But I thought it was funny. How many of you have ever told a lie? The truth is this. One of the first things we learn how to do is lie. Justin and and, uh, and uh, Brittany were at our house last night for supper, and uh, they have a little girl named Ellie, and she's two, and she's like about the cutest thing you ever saw. And she was playing with with uh, no a bunch of old cars that Noah had, and she was playing with them. And someone said to her, "Are those your cars?" And she looks up, curly hair, blonde, beautiful, beautiful. Yes. <laughs> Those are yours? Yes. <laughs> but this is one of the first things we do. I can remember, as a young kid, I can remember going to get a cookie. This is probably, a lot of things are going to start making sense to you right about now. But I remember going to get a cookie. And I remember walking in and my mom saying, get two cookies. And I can remember going to the thing, taking a cookie, shoving it in my mouth, and then taking two cookies. <laughs> Come on, don't make me feel bad. Anyone else ever done that? And because we just, it's this, we just learn early to, for being dishonest. And that's because our nature is fallen. We are sinful by nature. We've all lied. Why do we lie? Number one thing we need to remember is that God hates lying. You say, wow, that's really deep. It's true. It doesn't like God thinks, oh, this is a bad idea. God hates lying. It says this in Proverbs 12, 22. The Lord detests or hates lying lips, but he delights in those who tell the truth. Detest in, or, or detest in the original language is really strong language. It's something that's disgusting. Have you ever eaten something that wasn't very good? Yeah. And when you eat it, you're like, oh. It's like that. It's this very strong that he hates it. It's disgusting and that it makes him nauseous or it makes him sick. That's pretty strong. This is not talking about murder or, or other things. It's talking about lying. And it doesn't qualify the lie with, oh, well, it's a really big lie or a really small lie. It just says, God detests lying. And I wonder, I wonder why God hates lying so much. I think one reason he hates lying so much is and when you look back in the Bible and you look at Jesus and, and, and I mean, with God and, 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 and Satan, Satan was the father of lies, the Bible tells us. And he was a liar from the beginning. He wasn't holding to the truth. It talks about that in John 8, 44. The Greek word for truth in the Bible is this, if I can pronounce it. Aletheia. And that's the Greek word for truth. And it's a really interesting word. It's not just talking about the, the truth that is spoken. Aletheia is deeper than that. It's not just about the truth that is spoken. It's a true idea, reality, or sincerity. Have you ever said something that you weren't really sincere about? Like, nice shirt, when you didn't really like the shirt? Like, I personally will take compliments if they're true or not. But we sometimes say things that we're not sincere about. Divine truth revealed to man, Aletheia. It's about straightforwardness or honesty. But when you look at the word in Greek, it means this. To be laid bare. To be laid bare. Without cover. To be laid bare is for everyone to see without cover. Aletheia. I want to be the person who is without cover before God. Now the thing is, God can see through the covers that I put in place. Amen. 
But I want to be a person who stands before God in my everyday life without cover. Say, listen, God, here's my struggles. Here's my mistakes. I know that you see them, but I want to confess them to you. I want to be someone whose life is laid bare. And that needs to be all of our goals. But the truth is, probably everybody in this room, to certain degrees, live parts of your life as a lie. Now you say, well, that's a little, I think that's the truth. That there's parts of us that we don't let people see, we don't want people to know, and we live a life that at least is partially covered. But the Bible tells us that he wants us to live a life of truth, a life that is laid bare. How do we lie? Well, the first thing we do, this might seem obvious, but we lie to others. Jeremiah 9.5 says this, A friend deceives a friend, and no one speaks the truth. Do you know that women, women, Hear this. That women lie an average of three times every day, studies tell us. Every day. I don't know what they were. I tried to Google what things women lie about, and that just got weird. And so I just stopped that because that was just weird. And so I just... Women lie on average three times a day. And they'll lie. I, I'm not going to say anything. Uh, I'm not going to point out anybody, you know, anyone in my life or anything that I'm married to or nothing like that. But, but sometimes, this is not always true, but sometimes spouses, even husbands, wives, doesn't matter, they'll lie about things like this. They'll buy something that's $29.99 plus tax. And you say, and, and the other spouse will say, how much was it? And they'll say, $20. Now, I'm not saying anyone in my family did that before, but it's like $20. But they say women lie... An average of three times a day. And men are feeling pretty good about themselves right now. Men lie an average of six times a day. No one here is surprised. That's what I'm telling you. But women are pulled three times a day. Men about six times a day. According to my brief Google search that got really weird, they lie about different things. But we all tend to lie. Like in the video, be like, you know what, I'm late. And instead of just saying I overslept, I say, well, the traffic was bad. Or instead of this, I say this, this, or this. Can you think of a time that you lied, men or women? And men and women in marriages, they'll lie, not by saying out a straight lie, but they'll lie by holding back information. Now, I don't think anyone here does that, but I'm just saying in other places of worship that happens, where the husband or wife will lie by just withholding information. So they'll buy something and say, well, I hope I don't get to find out. And I don't just mean big lies. I remember one time, and I can't even remember all the details, but I remember one time I lied to Penny. And I remember I told her a lie, and for me, I didn't think it was a big deal. It wasn't a big lie. It wasn't like, yeah, I murdered the dog and it buried it in the backyard. It was nothing big. That did cross my mind, though. I can't lie. And, uh, but, and I remember her finding out. And I remember her coming to me and saying, Troy, you lied. I said, well, I didn't. And they tried to justify it. Oh, I didn't really lie because I just didn't tell you. I just didn't. And I remember her saying, if you'll lie about that, what else will you lie about? Because one small mistruth never stops at one small mistruth. A lie to cover a lie, to cover a lie, to cover a lie. And then we live a life of lies. Being truthful has really helped me in my life. I haven't always been truthful, but in pastoring for 18 years has been really helpful because I've had people accuse me of things, say that I said things that I didn't say, say that I did this or I did that. But never, never having to remember what you've said deceitfully 
it's much easier to remember the truth. Amen. So living in the truth is really important. We lie to each other, and we lie to God, which is foolish, but we do. We lie to God. It says this in Acts 5.4, What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied to human beings, but to God. Because when we lie to each other, we're still lying to God. And that is hard for us to understand. We need to understand that God sees and knows our hearts. How many know that that is true? Amen. People say to me all the time, just, just follow your heart. And I'm like, for the love of everything good, do not follow your heart. The heart is wicked above all things. Do not follow your heart. Amen. Follow God. Yeah, right. God sees us and he knows our hearts. He sees when we cheat on our EI. He sees when we're married. And another relationship just starts in a really simple, innocent way. Yeah. He sees. He sees when we steal from work. He sees when you go to a store and you pay for something and you get more than what you paid for. He sees it in that moment. And he's asking us to live a life that is bare. A life that is without cover. I won't go into the story, but I, one time I was back in Bathurst and I went to, and I, I mean, Bathurst, I didn't know. I mean, I, I thought that I didn't have any money. I felt like I was... Uh, and I remember I was living at Bob and Mary's house there here today, and I paid rent late every month. Thank you for that, by the way. And, and I was, it was just, it was just, and I remember I went to Christmas, and I went to buy a penny a lamp. And I remember I went and bought her a lamp, and I bought two lamps, and when I got home, the lamps were about $50. And when I got home, I noticed on my receipt that I had only paid for one lamp. And my first notion was, yes, the Lord has blessed me. <laughs> that was my first. <laughs> and then I was like, you know what, this isn't right. So I go back, bring my receipt back to Walmart. And I go to Walmart, I go to the lady at the counter, and I said, listen, this is what happened. I paid for some stuff. I paid for, I had two lamps. I paid for one lamp. I paid for two lamps, but they only charged me for one. She's like, shh. <laughs> That's what she does. She's like, shh. I'm like, no, I'm here to pay for the lamp. Like, you are? <laughs> Why? I'm like, because I didn't pay for it the first time. See, because a little lie multiplies. We lie to each other, we lie to God, and we lie to ourselves. Says this is Psalm 119, 27 to 29. Help me understand the meaning of your commandments. I will meditate on your wonderful deeds. I weep with sorrow. Encourage me to be your word. Keep me from lying to myself. Give me the privilege of knowing your instructions. But we lie to ourselves. And we say, you know what? It's not me that has the problem. It's them. And then we convince ourselves that... What I'm doing isn't hurting anybody. We lie. And then we convince ourselves of that lie. And we say, you know what? I could quit anytime. Anytime I want, I can quit. This doesn't control me. I can quit whenever I want. I'm not the problem. Listen, what I watch on the internet isn't a problem. It doesn't hurt anybody me. And we lie to ourselves. I have a pastor friend that doesn't live in this province.